So <laughs> when did you start your calling contest? Uh, 2000. Yeah, year 2000. Yeah, because, you know, we doing a deal. And you know, back then, Graham was the only gig in town. Mm-hmm. So I decided, hell, I'd have one. And we did it just same way. It was uh same rules, same everything. And matter of fact, that's, that's the first 50-pound coyote I've ever seen. Well, there was only seven teams in it that first year. And it was funny is uh, these guys showed up to this deal. They've got a 52-pound coyote. Well, there's only seven teams in it, so it didn't pay a hell of a lot. And uh, but uh, these guys, you look at them, tell they're not hunters. Yeah. I said, "Where the hell did y'all kill a forty or fifty-two pound cow?" I, no, I asked him. I said, "What are y'all feeding that cow?" And he said, uh, "Poodles." I said, "Poodles." He goes, "Yeah." He said, "As you can probably well tell, we're not cow hunters." He said, "But my buddy was smoking a cigarette and letting his poodle out to take a shit in his backyard, and this big cow <laughs> jumped the fence and took his poodle off." And he said, "We heard about this hunter hunt from a friend of ours." He said, so uh, we borrowed a Fox Pro call off of a guy, and we barricaded ourselves on his back porch, back patio with some uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I know, the patio furniture. Yeah. And he said, we put that collar out there, and in 30 seconds, he jumped over that fence. We shot him, waited until weigh-in. <laughs> I said, I'll be damned. <laughs> yeah, 52 pounds, feeding them food. <clears throat> Big old coyote right there. Yeah, but no, I've been doing it a while. And we've tried several different you know, John, you know, we went from the 24 hour, which was originally 24 hour hunt. And then we went to a, a one day daylight only with a 12 coyote limit. And, and like I say, we kind of evolved. Well, then it got to the point where, oh, uh, one team bragged about they didn't kill one coyote inside of 500 yards. And I said, yeah. that's not a coyote. That's right. not really calling. Yeah. That's the shooting contest. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I wanted it to be a true calling contest, so that's why I changed it to a shotgun contest, yeah. which I am no shotgun advocate. I hate them <laughs> so guys. I, I did for the longest time, but then I found me a, a shell that would actually kill them, and uh, that's a whole other story. But uh, So we went to the shotgun only, and it, was, it cut, and I knew it was going to cut my yeah. – entries in town but i wanted to be a manhunt yeah and we experienced went well you know you've probably seen i changed it back to a 24-hour uh hunt with rifles Mm -hmm. because i i I wanted it to be a manhunt but i found out there's not a whole lot of men left in the world (laughs) (laughs) because i think i think this year we had like 12 teams you know and so plus i was a, a bunch of guys you know I guess they don't have shotgun country, but they don't understand. But but right. I, I just miss seeing that old bunch of guys that we started with back yeah. in the day, you know, that that I wasn't getting to see. You know, like J.C. and Lane mm-hmm. and uh, Mike Trammell. I mean, my, uh, yeah, Mike Trammell. He'll, they'll get a kick out of that. John Trammell, Mike Robertson, and uh, John Cadell, all them old school guys yeah. that we like to the – you know, those guys, we hunted it when it was fun to hunt against each other. It was a different deal. Now, nowadays, everything's a pissing contest. Everybody gets mad if you're using this or you're not using that. This call versus that call. This uh, thermal or not thermal. Mm-hmm. Back then, we didn't care. And, yeah. and uh, you know, and, and that's the other reason I made my hunt unlimited because – Kissing your sister sucks. And when you have to tie, <laughs> tiebreakers suck. And there's always going to be a discrepancy. There's always going to be a bad deal. But the good thing back then, uh, like when we tied, like those teams that I just talked about, we had already made up our mind because back in them days, you knew it was either going to be us, Joe Ross Jameson and Philly Arizona, uh, JC. You, know, you had your players mm-hmm. that was going to be tough to be. Well, four or five of those player teams, We'd already made up our mind because we were all buddies. We said, listen, if it's one tie, all tie. If we tie, we just split the money between first and second. We just spread it out and we split it between the two teams. Mm -hmm. I'll be damned one time, four of us were tied. Yeah, (laughs) and we all split the money. There wasn't no, hey, we're the champs, you're not the champs. We were all the champs because they didn't know better than I did. And you you hated that to be so uh 
But nowadays, oh my yeah. god, no, it's it's not like that deal. No. Yeah, they it's all about the piss. It's yeah, seeing who's got the biggest penis. And uh, <laughs> God dang. And you know, closed lip, that was the enjoyment back then is we talked all night. Yeah. Everybody yeah. talked all night. Hey, y'all doing good? Nah, we ain't seeing shit. You know, uh, what are y'all using? Uh, yeah. Like, here's the best for instance, last moment. Bucky and Al and them were hunting one night, and they're one of the teams that we always worried about, but they were the best of friends and still are. One night we call them, it's a dead night. I mean, we ain't killed. Killed two in the day, ain't seen a cop. About midnight, I call old Les. I said, Les, y'all doing good? No, nah, we, ain't, we ain't seen shit. And I said, yeah, we ain't either, man. It's slow. All right, well, holler at me later. Well, about an hour or two later, I call him back, and I said, Doing you good? He goes, yeah, we killed uh, seven in the last hour. I said, you killed seven? <laughs> I said, no shit. I said, what are you using? He goes, I ain't going to tell you. I said, why not? You daggum stingy. Are you going to be that way? He goes, no, no, no. He goes, you'll laugh at me. I said, you killed seven. We got two. I ain't going to laugh at you. I said, we ain't seen a dog all night. He goes, he goes well, we're using the chicken. I said, the chicken? He goes, I told you he's going to laugh at me. I said, no, he, he, the chicken? He goes, uh, like what? He goes, yeah, like a buck, 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 buck. He did that on me. And then I started laughing. He goes, I told you he's going to laugh. I said, no, I'm mad. He goes, why? Because I ain't got the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but those those are what made it fun. And that's yeah. why I'm hoping that by making a 24-hour hunt, and, you know, a lot of people get mad because it, the thermal deal. Yeah. I said, guys, why are y'all bitching about the thermal? I said, thermal would be just like when they come out with these good electronic mm -hmm. calls. I said, we're always going to do better because it's just killing. It, uh, it doesn't matter how you kill them. You just want to kill them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so and, and thermal in places in my country is good. Places, it's it's usually yeah. you get into the woods, it ain't yeah. worth five cents. Where light, I I old gage porter a couple of years ago the first time he come up here and we had some thermal and we went thermal and i had red i had red light on my gun he had the thermal no maybe it was the other way no he had the, he was scanning with the red light he goes here comes guy here comes i'm looking i'm looking i can't see him i said where he's a hundred yards i said where i can't see it so good and i look and i look and then i look in his light i can see it just plain as day Looking at thermal, I couldn't see him because he's in that grass. And mm -hmm. I couldn't, but then my eyes glowed like Christmas tree. Yeah. And uh, so, so I'm not. And, you know, a lot of it comes with some guys can afford it and some guys can't. But it's yeah. just like rifles. Some people got to sh shoot with a 22, and some people get 338 little, little puas. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But anyway, it'll, I think it'll really it'll get back being yeah. a big hunt. And then the other deal is, yeah, you got to, that was the good thing about it being small is because it was pretty much my buddies, guys I right. knew and trusted. Yeah. But when you open it up to more, that's when you open it up to cheating. Yeah. And that, that I'm got, sure you've seen some things. Oh my God. The cheating. <laughs> yeah. You know, we had that, that, well, and, and what's bad is, you know, like at one year, here's a fun, you know, we went up there and we hunted that elk city hunt. Well, Elk mm -hmm. City Hunt was a big summer gun. It had like 125 teams. Well, we hunted it five years in a row, and we got third the year before. No, year four, we didn't. The year before that, we got third. Well, we uh, it was windy, windy day. We knew five coyotes may win this summer gun. Well, I'll kiss your ass if we didn't kill five. We shot five on the first stand. We shot four, and then... Uh, but we shot another one we couldn't find. But we killed four cows on the first stand. We knew damn good and well there was a pretty good chance we we're going to. And this booger paid like, you know, eleven, twelve thousand dollars 12000 Yeah. And I said, oh, God. Well, they got a rule. Texas guys was winning that hunt every year. Yeah. And they could, the guy that run it was an old drunk cowboy. And uh, I could not. Nobody could stand him. And he'd always picking, on, picking at us uh, Texas guys. All you Texas guys come in here close to the front so I can paint a picture for you guys to understand, yo boy. <laughs> so we took enjoyment. And, and like I say, they had screwed a couple of other guys before we got screwed. We got up there that one year. When we killed that four, we knew it was quick. Well, then it got better. 
Well, by lunch, we killed 10. Mm-hmm. And then by, we wind up killing 14 mm-hmm. by 4 o'clock. And, uh, we, and the most ever been killed, because it was a one day, daylight only, the most been ever been killed was 13. So we mm-hmm. knew on this windy day, we're probably going to be golden. So, but the year before, they got a rule up there in Oklahoma, which it ain't even actual rule. You got, you cannot have a loaded gun on a public road. That's the rule. But once you get on private pro, you don't have to. You can go, yeah. But this guy, to trick us, to trip us, try to trip us out, and they'd done it to Kelly Jackson a couple of years before, is you guys got to follow up. Uh, you must unload your gun at all times. So if you got in a pickup and it moved, you broke a rule. Mm-hmm. So for us Texas guys that don't ever unload our guns, it was yeah. tough. And the year before, I drove on the third stand, I drove 15 feet, and I forgot to take my bullets out of my gun. We were done. Rule's a rule. We quit. Yeah. And went on. And Mitch said, well, I'm not. I said, no, rule's a rule. I said, I broke it. I said, so anyway. We quit. Well, this year, knowing that we might do that, we took shoe polish and put on our windows, unload gun. <laughs> so every time we got in, we unload our gun. Well, anyway, we uh, so we were super freaked out about unloading our gun. We mm-hmm. did everything, did everything right. Got up, we called up there. We're fixing. It. We're already starting to count our money. And then when we pulled up to the deal, we went to unloading them coyotes. And uh, er, because everybody else had one, two, everybody like, oh, you know, oh, they cheating, they cheating. Of course, nobody's saying it to my face. (laughs) Well, Jody, the guy running the deal, he drunk, he comes out and smokes a cigarette, looks at him, ain't no effing way. I said, what do you mean there ain't no effing way? You see the son of a bitch laying on the ground. (laughs) And uh, boy, it pissed me off. I was ready to whoop his ass. Well, he leaves and he goes back in there. I said, Mitch, you're freaking screw us. And and, because I follow him. And he goes in there. It's an old oil field supply. And he gets over there with the polygraph guy and another guy running it. And I get on this side so I can overhear him. He goes, there ain't no way them something got killed. Everybody else coming in here, one, two, and they come 14. You gonna, they had to cheat. He's telling the polygraph guy that I'm cheating. Mm-hmm. And I walked out there and I told Mitch, I said, Mitch, they're fixing to screw us. He said, he's over there telling the polygraph guy we cheated. And uh, so anyway, we go over there. You know, usually you flip a coin and see who has to take polygraph. Nope. No, Clay Reed's taking this polygraph. I don't give a dang. I said, I'm taking a hundred of them. I passed them up. And so we go back in there. I knew the jet screws was in because when I got in there, the polygraph guy, your hands are nasty. You need to go wash them. I said, I just did. I said, these hands are clean. Go wash them again. So he makes me go wash my hands again. And of course, everybody's looking at what's going on. So I go back in there. He puts everything. He's putting everything on me. He said, where was you hunting at? I said, oh, we hunt down around Wichita Falls. He said, oh, that's a long way. I said, that's two hours. I said, I've hunted here five years in a row. And he goes, uh, I said, well, actually, more probably around Archer City. He goes, what is it? Archer City or Wichita Falls? Don't start lying before I get you on this <laughs> machine. I said, if you want the truth, I'm hunting out there in BFE in the middle of nowhere. So he's already got me pissed off. So that that's yeah. already null and void the deal. He could have lost his license. I didn't know this till later. It by by stirring me up, mm-hmm. that that pot test is null and void. Well, then it gets worse. He goes, ah, you know, that's a, you know, you don't need to start lying over there. He goes, that's a long way to go. I said, dude, I said, just give me the test. So he puts me on the deal, and we go through there. He gives me a test. And he's looking at it, and he goes, eh, what were you thinking about when you hunted, when you took this? So what do you mean, what was I thinking about? Yeah, he was thinking about something. I said, yeah, I was thinking about taking my money and getting the hell out of here. No, there was something they thinking about. What were you thinking about? Says this repetitively over and over and over. I said, look, finally, this goes on for like 15, 20 minutes. I said, dude, did I pass the test or did I not pass the test? He goes, well, there's this little glitch. And I said, no, sir. I said, I've taken a 1,000 of these. I said, for 20 years, I've been putting them on up there. I know what a polygraph is. You don't fail guys over glitches, little glip. He said, that's a spike. A spike is what you fail, <laughs> not, not a little glitch. 
He goes, well, you see this? And I said, no, sir. There ain't nothing any different than that line, than this line, than this line, than this line. So you're going to have to do better than that, cowboy. And he goes, well, I don't. Well, let's just try it again. So he takes, I do the polygraph again. And he does the same thing. Well, what was you thinking about? I said, dude, I was not thinking about nothing in this. I said, I've taken a million of these to polygraph. We did nothing. And I'm back there an hour with the same question over and over and over and over and over. And I'm getting, I'm already irritated. He says, he goes, well, all right, hypothetically, <laughs> what what rule in this hunt would you worry about? I said, I wouldn't worry about nothing in this hunt. I said, and he had, keeps asking me again and again. And he goes, Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking hypothetically. I'm not hooked up to nothing. And uh, he said, well, if there was, I said, well, if there was, and I ain't, it would be the unload the gun rule. I said, but we don't have that rule in Texas. He said, but we knew that. Because last year, I told him the story about me doing a deal. I broke the rule. Rule's broken. We quit in the middle of the hunt. I said, so this year, we put unload gun on our deal to make sure we didn't unload gun. Even though that rule has absolutely nothing to do with calling and killing a cow. Mm -hmm. And I said, so, I said, but if I had one, that would be it. it was, you, 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 you did it, didn't you? I said, did what? You hunted with the London goat in and you pick it. And he got up and he walked out there and told that guy, he said he drove with a loaded gun in a pickup and they failed me, cost us twelve thousand dollars. Oh, and I'm telling <laughs> and uh as it turned out, I was on probation because I had to stand there for a minute because I'd beat up I was on ten year felony probation because I'd beat up a drug dealer several years before and I liked about two years of getting off that, which now it's off my con because I did, it's off my record, but I had to, so it was like, <laughs> if it wasn't for that 10 year celebration, I was going to clean house of that whole place. <laughs> oh, I, and I'm still mad about it. I'm guaranteed if I ever run across, I hope I don't ever run across that bad, but that's, a, a, but, and here's what's bad. All right. So the guys that were second, they killed 12, you know, but you know, so they, nobody questioned them, but they were from Oklahoma. Yeah. Those guys turned out to be the real cheaters. <laughs> they won my hunt. They won my hunt the next week. And uh, I just had, I knew a guy that knew this guy. But anyway, I had no reason to question them. They killed a bunch of cows and they were, they won. All right. Well, years later, well, then the next year, a guy comes in there, kills the limit by nine o'clock. Oh, I was, that's the hunt I hunted, your hunt. Oh, really? That guy. The, guy, the little bitty guy. Yep. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you could look at this guy. Yeah. Like, Wait a minute. But he went in there, passed the polygraph, and I was like, what the hell? And then the next year, the same deal. And that boy, so I was, and I knew these guys were cheating, but it, it, just like me, you know, I, I wasn't cheating, but everybody called us cheating because we mm -hmm. did the exceptional thing. And, uh, and that happens a lot. So, uh, so I worried, but then, about uh i guess that's three or four years ago we found out how they was doing i had yeah. a buddy of mine call me up and give me the skinny on how they were they were taking the xanax and all that and mm -hmm. so so that's something you got to fight but they probably that little ring out of yeah. uh, uh, oklahoma has yeah. taken we well, probably over a quarter million dollars yeah and because what pisses was... you know that's what makes me mad is they have not done anything about yeah. any of those guys yeah yeah, if if I go out here and I shoot a hog off the county road, they'll take every gun I got, throw mm -hmm. me in jail, all this. But these guys can rob us and oh, because yeah. they were they were hitting your yeah they got San Angelo everything. I got like like I say they got uh, the Oklahoma City hunt, they got the Caddo hunt, they got my hunt three years in a row, San Angelo several several years in a row, and so I mean yeah that's like. The one that uh, that we found out about him getting, they got second, but that's only because one guy just happened to kill a freak cat, right. and uh, and uh, so, but yeah, it's it's a struggle to find. Which now Jeremy, luckily, the best thing they did is they've got that trapper in there yeah. dissecting them cats, which is what I I told him to do because me and all these contest guys, we talk yeah. directors talk a lot. Matter of fact, as soon as I found out who all the cheaters was. I called every son of a gun around and mm -hmm. every director around and give them the list. And, uh, but, 
But he did a good thing. But that's what I was told. That's why I was wanting to give a drug test right there. You can buy them drug tests right over the counter. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so if you get a combination of them certain drugs, and that's probably may, may do it my hunt this year. Yeah. And, hell, it t- takes two seconds to run a piss test right there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, well, hell, you know, I smoke a little pot. I said, well, that ain't going to get you failed. It's a combination of drugs. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and certain drugs, but. Yeah, nowadays, hell, everybody's taking CBD oil and all that, and smoking <laughs> pot. That's kind of a norm. Hell, if I had some, I'd probably smoke around there now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story about smoking pot. Back in the day, I, you know, I had a bunch of friends. They Everybody smoked pot in my day, and and uh, I never was a big pot guy. I, I never did get why guys want to smoke marijuana, unless you're sitting at the house and you want to eat Cheetos. Yeah. But, uh, but, <laughs> Cause you know it made me sleepy as hell. Yeah, I wanted to go go go. By God, I need that whiskey, <laughs> and a god dang sure ain't taking no cocaine. And that's another story. And uh, but uh, that, uh, that that stuff make you work too hard. Yeah, <laughs> I'll get to that one first. I, I yeah, this is a true story. I well, I had a buddy of mine, and and he was a local drug dealer, and he was a speed. He, he had that crank. You know, yeah. they called it crank back then. Well, I was roofing houses. And I had this old man, this old woman's house, and I was doing it by myself. And I needed to get it done so I could get paid. So I was over there at old Mark's house, and old Mark, well, get you some of this. You'll get it done. I said, no, I ain't, I ain't messing with that damn drug. I said, get it. With me. And about two days, I said, nah, nah. Well, then finally, I had to get it done. So I said, all right. So we smoked this little crank. And uh, so anyway, I go over there. And I'm going to tell you what, it turned me into the roofless son of a bitch that ever was in America. I mean, I was throwing them nails. I was swallowing nails and spitting them in that roof. I, throwing them 80-pound shingles up on that roof at two at a time. Whoop, 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 whoop. And never say a word. I wouldn't say five words. I mean, but I messed up and I took my buddy Cameron, who, who smoked a little too. Well, he was the exact opposite. He never shut up. <laughs> so we made a pretty good couple up there on the roof. But I mean, I was a roof of something. And at midnight, the old man and the old woman come out there and they go, uh, we're going to try to go to sleep. Can y'all come off the roof? I said, you sure you you want a privacy fence? We'll put up a privacy fence for you. We'll do it. We'll, we'll do it. Well, that was all well and good. Well, that's the bad part. But when you come off of that stuff, I was sore. I looked like a paraplegic for three days. I don't want to wear that dumb. That dumb like killed me. I sore. Yeah. And what was funny, I think the next day they got busted over at Mark's house. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, that going back to that pot deal, one night we had this little party at my house and everybody's leaving and we're all sitting there on the, on the couch. We all got them Chinese eyes going, you know, it's all real quiet. And all of a sudden I hear this. Bloop, 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 bloop. I looked over at David and I said, David, did you hear that? Uh, yeah, it sounds like bubbles. You just hear it? What the hell is that? I look over my left shoulder, and you remember the boy I was talking about, his dad, stepdad took me in? Mm-hmm. His name is Russell Eaton, but we call him Boo. And old Boo, he was about 16 at the time. He had, he had got the munchies, went in there to my fridge, and got one of the big, giant, chrome salad bowls, mm-hmm. you know, big something gun, and poured a whole damn box of Fruit Loops in it <laughs> and a whole gallon of milk in it and then passed out and was drowning face down <laughs> in that goddamn Fruit Loop. And that's what we could hear him bleep, 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 bleep. And when I went over there, I grabbed him by his hair and I pulled him up and old milk running off his nose and he had Fruit Loops stuck all over his head. I said, boy, that would have been hell to explain up there at the gates of St. Peter. How'd you die? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but yeah, that's so good. Oh. Yeah, I'm telling you. Death Chief. by Fruit Loops. <laughs> yeah, I, I drowned in a box of Fruit Loops. Yeah. <laughs> what? How do you do that? Oh. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's. I had a pretty colorful life. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> yeah. And some matter of fact, one of the guys that was sitting there. I, you know, I tried to commit suicide three different times in my life. And the first time, I was homeless. I was working at that uh, washing dishes at the deal. I was 14 years old. And I had a pretty little girlfriend. I loved her. And, she, and of course, she finally smartened up and figured out that, hey, this guy's making 310 an hour. And 
and is driving a 10 speed to work. I said, so she went to bigger and better things, broke up with me, and I was hungry, and I was, I was mad, distraught. So I went over there in Wichita over to Beverly uh, Loop, Loop 11, Beverly Bridge. They got Beverly Bridge that comes over to Wichita Bridge, and I was going to jump off that bridge. Well, I may kill myself someday, but it'll never be jumping off a bridge again. I can guarantee you. Because about the time, it sounded like a good idea at the time, about halfway time down, I wanted to grow wings. And I mean, <laughs> I had them old hands of flapping. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Well, the Wichita Bridge didn't have but about that much water in it, but it had about six foot of mud. So when I hit that sun gun, it did splat me, but I, I mean, I went thigh deep in the mud. Yeah. It took me forever to get, and this is like, <laughs> two o'clock in the morning yeah. and i dug my took me forever to dig myself out of that quicksand to get out of that son of a gun of course my face is bleeding where i slapped that water and i get nose bleeding lips bleeding and i crawl finally get out of it and i crawl through what well, i crawl out of it there's briars so i get out by the time i get out of them briars i got short sleeves so i'm cut all all the hell my face got mangled up got blood and mud hanging off of me and when I come out of there, I walk, stumbled out into the middle of Loop 11, or yeah, Loop 11. And when I did, this car damn near runs me over. <laughs> and uh, so I'm standing there in the bright lights of this car, and these two guys get out. Hey, dude, are you all right? <laughs> Hell, it's two buddies of mine, Lonnie and Bobby. And uh, <laughs> and I can tell it's Lonnie. I said, Lonnie, is that you? Reed, is that you? I said, yeah. I said, what the hell happened to you? So I jumped off that bridge, and he still had that doobie in his hand. He goes, do it again. I said, no, I ain't jumping off. I said, give me a ride back to Owl Park, and they give me a ride to Owl Park. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounded like a good idea at the time, but about halfway down, I thought, man, maybe I do want to live. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get, that would have been hard to explain. Well, I jumped off a bridge and got run over by a red and black Camaro by a buddy of mine smoking a doobie. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, them guys, hello, Bobby, wind up having a car wreck on his 18th birthday. Yep, got a deal, and I just left them. He's a good dude, but yeah, your life and times. As far as going back to your contest, it's hard to go back after those stories. Yeah, I don't. Uh... <laughs> as far as the shotgun hunt, it seemed to be, yes, it wasn't favored by a lot of people. Yeah. But the people that did it were tough. You know, they, they swore by it being the funnest thing they ever done. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's funny. There, get this. You know Nathan, Nathan mm -hmm. and Laramie. They called me, cussing me yeah. up once. I can't believe you turned it into a shotgun. <laughs> and uh, well, they wind up getting in it, and I'll be damned if they didn't win the son of a gun. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, and old Nathan come over to me after they did. He said, "I owe you an apology." And I said, "For what?" He was used right. I said, "Well, I usually am right." That's what I'm right, <laughs> right this time. He goes, that's the most damn fun I've ever had. He goes, yeah. I've never killed a coyote with a shotgun. I said, really? He goes, yeah. He said, but I have never had so much fun in my life. Mm -hmm. And then the other day when I changed it to a deal, Laramie called me and wearing my ass out. <laughs> what the deal, man? I said, you wasn't there this year? What the heck? Well, yeah. I said, oh, now you can't grab that if you don't hunt it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it, you know, it was a man hunt. Like this year, we we didn't have near as many teams, but the ones we had, they were salty. Yeah, and so, and that's and that's good to an extent. As a matter of fact, I thought about having a, another one, shotgun, mm -hmm. and uh, up in the up in the ante on the yeah. son of a gun and winter take all kind of deal. Yeah. So I ain't above that. But God dang, getting shotgun shells is is like pulling yeah. teeth, yeah. and getting the right shotgun shell yeah. is it? You know, I like them Remington's express three inch mag uh mm -hmm. number four buck and uh and it, how i stumbled on it they had a throckmorton one day hunt which i think they still have it old clay riley and them and it was funny i go down there to the hunt no clay riley and when i pull up he said uh you're just hunting exhibition ain't you i said exhibition what the hell are you talking about 
He goes, well, we didn't really want no professionals in here. And I laughed. I said, well, Riley, I'm going to tell you how professional I am. I said, I can't find my bullets. I don't have no damn bullets. I got 15 <laughs> shotgun shells that I found in the back seat. And they were happy to be them Remington's. Yeah. And I said, so that's how professional I am. So anyway, I left there and I had a little 400 acre place over there at Loving. And I thought, well, if I kill one cow, don't I figured I'd be happy. Well, the first cow that I killed, 10 yards, and I mean melting. I said, all right. All right, well, the next call, cow come in, kind of gets buggered, and he's at 65 yards through the sunflowers. Boom. I shoot him and drop him one shot. I said, Man, boy, I like this, 65 yards. Da -da. Grab him, I got two cows. Go to the next stand, don't call up nothing. Next stand, I call in double, and they come running hot. Well, I shoot the first one at 22 steps, and the other one, he hauls ass. Well, I roll him at 68 yards with them Remington. Mm -hmm. So now I got four cows. I said, man, I was hoping to get one. I got four. So good deal. Later on, I wind up killing another one at like 72 steps. So I become, and I wind up killing seven that day. And I come back to the way in. I said, well, Riley, and I, what's winning it? He goes, how many you got? Seven. He goes, well, you won. I said, what's second? Nobody killed anything. And nobody <laughs> killed anything. Of course, there wasn't but about 10 hunts. He goes, no, hell no. So I got first prize, second prize, biggest coyote, and all that. <laughs> but that's when I become a believer of the Remington. Yeah. Because the next hunt, I thought, man, that worked good. But I didn't have none of them Remington. <clears throat> I had the exact same shells in Federal and Winchester. Mm -hmm. And I took him out. That first cow come in with the Winchester, and I shot him in the face from five yards. And then I shot him, I had an extender tube, I shot him seven times, and he was still alive, and I had to stomp his eyeballs out. Yeah. Seven times inside of 50 yards, and I ain't got him killed. So I throw them shells away, went in there and got them Federals, I think two coyotes in a row did the same damn thing. Yeah. But them damn Remington's, I don't know what the difference is, but they, they just kill them good. Just probably and, pattern a lot better. But, uh. Here's 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 the crack up deal of that. So last moment he calls me the next year. He said, Hey, what shotgun shells? And I told him the same story I told you. I said, Them Remington, man, you gotta get some Remington. And the feed store in Archer, they had just mm -hmm. got I got them to give me fifty shells, uh fifty boxes. And goddamn I went up there and they called me and said, Hey, your shells are in. All right, I'll get up there sometime this week and I'll get up there. Well, the last call and said, Hey, where can I get some of them shells? And I said, Well, I just had some had a feed store buy me some up there. You can go get a few boxes. So I go up there to get my shells. I say, Hey, I'm here to get my shells. He goes, I don't have any. I said, You don't have any? He's buying me fifty bucks. Five boxes. And he goes, Yeah, but some old toothless cowboy come in here and said you told him he he can get some. I said, Sir him. He said, He got them all. <laughs> I said, Well, that's some good. So I called old Les and hey. What the hell are you doing? You bought all his. What is that? I'm playing a little defense. If I got them, you ain't. I said, well, kiss my butt. Yeah. But I, like I say, they they just kill. Hell, last year, last year, the year four, I guess it was year four last, I shot one at 87 steps with them some guns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's reaching on out there with a shotgun. Yeah. Now I got that. I got a, a Stoger shotgun, mm -hmm. and I've got that. Uh, what is it, Carlson, Coyote yeah. Choke. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's been a pretty deadly combination. On yeah, because one night, me and Mitch, I, that's when we had 1100, <clears throat> Remington 1100. You know, we always have two guys in the rack, shotgun on the bottom. I was shotgun on the bottom of that round. Cat comes in, 10 yards, broadside. I shoot that cat, the cat runs off. Mitch goes, you missed him. There ain't no effing way I missed a cat at 10 yards. Oh, I thought we were going to go to the ground. If he would have been up in the rack, I would have whooped his ass. And uh, matter of fact, when I get home, I may go whoop his ass. And, uh, oh, he, I mean, we were going at it. Hutch is freaking out. He thinks we're going to kill each other. Well, we didn't talk to each other for the next five hours. And then he misses a cow later. And I said, uh, you missed him. Oh, I didn't miss a cow from 75. Well, he's running off. He run <laughs> off. And, uh, well, the next morning I went over there at daylight. That cat run 150 yards out there, but he was sure dead. I, you know, you would think you hit a cat 
with number four buck at 10 yards, you at least see fur fly. Yeah. And we didn't even see nothing. Didn't, it didn't even look like, but it killed him and yeah. he was covered with it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so after that, I was not an advocate for the shotgun. <laughs> but, you know, after I started using shotgun more, it opened up a lot more country yeah. that I would normally not use. Because I remember one time I went into a place where I knew there was cats. And I knew a lot of cows, but I knew I'd, I just knew I'd get a cat. I mean, there's not an open spot in this place bigger than the little area that we're in right mm-hmm. now. And I put that cat, uh, collar right out in front of me on the edge of the other edge of it. And I guarantee you that cow come in so fast, so do, and you just, you just got to be ready. There yeah. ain't none of this sitting there within yeah. your lap. You got to have it right, boom. And I went right there and I shot him at the end of my barrel. And then Mitch, he goes with me one time. I said, Mitch, you can't put that gun. Cause I can see him. He's got the gun in his lap yeah. looking. And when I do that in those type of situations, I like a cross pattern. You know, everybody likes to go with their backs to each other. I cross pattern. I'll do that a lot in, in wherever I'm sitting. Mm-hmm. Because when you cross pattern, if I'm looking this way and you're looking this way, we're looking at a cro- an X, basically. Mm-hmm. All right? We can communicate better. Yeah. You see me pick up my gun, you know something's coming. I don't have to go look or point or do anything like that. I see something, then you can see my back. I can see, you see your back as well. Mm-hmm. But in in that thick brush, it is imperative. Because yeah. like that day, Mitch, we're in that cross pattern, and it, and I see this cow, <laughs> and it's funny. Because I knew it was almost going to, and it almost run Mitch over, and he's sitting there with his old gun in his lap. <laughs> and it dang near hit the barrel of his deal, run right by him, and I went, boom! And I shot it, you know, five yards right out in front of him. Holy shit, shit, God <laughs> Almighty! I said, I told you, son, you got to be ready. Yeah, with them boogers, but uh, it's it's fun. Yeah, and, and you know, and that's how Tory Cook and all them guys out. Yeah, you and them guys, you know, they always talk about. A lot of guys say that oh, we don't they don't have the cows. They got the cows. Yeah, but you, it's the brush is thicker. Mm-hmm. You don't see them, and they don't move. You know, out here we get to see them moving in the daytime, and, yeah. uh, or you can go out there and scan and see thirty. Well, there may be thirty, but you ain't gonna see them in hardwoods yeah. as tall as buildings. So it's but uh, yeah, it's like Benton Bowman and them. You know, when I hunted with them, you're gonna figure it out. And they just, uh, well, in fifteen <laughs> seconds, you know, that's when we hunted the eastern, and uh, that was funny. They the, turned out I was the driver because. My, my rifle screwed that, but the way it was supposed to be, I was supposed to be the day guy. Yeah. They were going to hunt night and I was going, I was going to sleep at night when it got day, they slept and I, man, it didn't happen that way. I drove the whole time <laughs> and I didn't sleep for three days, Ugh. but it, it, anyway, it, uh, so they crawl in at daylight, they crawl in the back seat and go to sleep. And I walk out there to <clears> fish <throat> pond, getting this heavy brush. It wasn't 30 seconds. Boom, 15 yards, I killed a cow. They they heard that deal. Boy, they thought, well, maybe it ain't so hard to kind of honestly. You got to get in the thick with them yeah. in that deal. And uh, and I, I like it to an extent. And like I say, and just like Laramie said, after he got used a shotgun, it, 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 it high. Yeah. You've got to re- – that separates the men from the boys. I don't give a shit who you're shitting. I mm-hmm. say, it's, yeah, you got to be a better – your setup has to be perfect. You got to be a good shot with a shotgun. You got to be a great caller. You know, and that's what we I always, you know, it's like Sterling's hunt. You know, mm-hmm. I started that hunt uh, about two years before he did. And uh, matter of fact, Roger Doherty, Lane Jones and his partner was the first champion. And I think he killed, he killed six. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah, because I killed three. I was madder than a Jap because I had... <laughs> That's a whole nother story, but yeah, right. But well, I thought if you could make it a shotgun hand call hunt, yeah. Ooh, now yeah. now you are doing something. Mm-hmm. I mean, hand calling is tough enough, and I love I love that hunt. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Sterling's done a great job with it. I wish I had his uh, oh, he can gather up sponsors. Yeah. I I cannot stand to be told no, which. 
Oh, Gage Porter. <laughs> Gage Porter's going to help me out with that a little. Hell, did you see all the prize he had for that dang game coon hunt? Mm-hmm. He had a, yeah, he had a, at last moment, he's going to have a coon hunt. And I guarantee he had prizes. Well, uh, it was funny because we didn't kill hardly any coons. Me and another guy hunted. I think we, you had to have five, heaviest five coons, and he had big coons and all this other deal. But he had all these prizes, right? I mean, he had thousands and thousands of dollars for, he had 30 days he put this on. And he had a, we got down to the last, second to last prize was a suppressor. Mm hmm. And uh, he had a suppressor, it was like eight hundred bucks, or whatever. And uh, and then the neck, so he gets to it, and I want a shirt with my first ticket, and I was mad because I wanted one big <laughs> prize. Well, it got down to the last two prizes, and I had these other last ticket. Well, then they, all right, now we're going with the uh, suppressor, mm-hmm. and they pulled it out, and he goes oh four two. Bingo! I win the suppressor. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. And everybody in there, oh, you look at so good. Well, then the last prize they give is two thousand dollars cash. Two thousand dollars cash, but you don't have a ticket for it. They just put your name out of the. They get your team name and all that out. And uh, and uh, I'll be damned if he didn't reach in there. And, oh, Alex Wetzel, he look. He looks over at me, and I think he's looking at Eric Latham next to me, and he goes points over there towards me and and i said you lucky so i'm gonna look at eric he goes i win it he goes you <laughs> me i won a suppressor <laughs> and the two thousand dollars oh it did get shitty in there then <laughs> yeah but i started moonwalking as i was going up there yes sir yes sir <laughs> i wished i'd have had a pimp pimp jacket on and a pimp hat out of but yeah Matter of fact, I'm still playing on that money right now, but <laughs> but yeah, Gage is going to help this year with a lot of sponsors, and uh, like I say, I bet it'll be I bet it'll be big this year. Yeah, and going back to that format. Yeah, yeah, it'll have a lot of people, but uh, it'll be good. It'll be good to see all the old buddies that I've been missing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but uh, it'll be 24 hour hunt. And the good thing about it is, now I made it unlimited. We always had a limit, but I've never had, I've never liked the idea of having a limit on a championship hunt. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because it ought to be able to who can kill the most, yeah. right? But as a contest director, I also know that you've got to make it, you've got to give them guys, some guys hope. Mm-hmm. guy with 5,000 acres may be able to go kill 12 cows. Yeah. yeah but he's not going to kill 32 cows. Right. So, uh, but the way I compensate getting them guys is, is 200, it's $250 a man to get in it. 200 goes to the main pot, which we pay first, second, and third. All right. But 50 of that goes to the heavy cow. Mm-hmm. All right. So you may not be able to kill 30 cows, but anybody can kill a, a yeah. big cow at yeah. any given time. Yeah. So, well, like back in the day, you know, I remember big cow paying four thousand dollars yeah so a lot of people get in it to win four thousand yeah. dollars plus we'll have a lot, uh, a lot of prizes you know you yeah. we get a lot of prizes and go back to that deal but i got you know the good thing about it, i've done it 20 something years is i i got a lot of sponsors are still in there but yeah. a lot of them i figured is help is cash sponsors because yeah. that helped like the sale barn i sell cattle and this they, they just give cash and then i can go either add it to the pot or go buy a prize, which is what I usually do right. is go buy a shotgun or buy rifles and buy the prizes. Yeah. yeah. So it just makes it a little bit easier, but, but I've never been real good at, I don't mind asking. It just pisses me off when they tell me no. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like you know, uh, girls. Uh, will you give me some sugar? No. <laughs> no, 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 you talk, man. I hate you. I hate you. Yeah, same, same idea. Yeah. So, so looping back around to the book. So you'll you'll finish out the year. What are your plans as far as the book? Well, probably gonna take a little bit to like. Oh put yeah, it all yeah, yeah. It'll take a while because, like, I say I'm I'm right now. I'm writing in a spiral notebook, day to day deal. 
All right, so then I'll really start writing the book. And that in between now and then, I have got to teach myself to type. Now I can get about, <laughs> I'm about 20, 20 words a minute, two finger chicken pecker, you know, all right, but that can only go. So, but if I can get to where I can free flow type, because yeah. uh, everybody's got, you know, some people say, well, you can talk into a deal and they'll type for you, but that's not, my, you know, Larry McMurtry that wrote Lonesome Dove, he happened to be a family mm-hmm. friend and all that, but, you know, we were talking about one day. He has to type with a 1952 typewriter. That's yeah. what his comfort is. Me, I'm comfortable on a computer, yeah. even if it's just chicken pecker. But if I could get, just because I can, if I write something long through there, I can erase it real quick. Yeah. I can go through there. and then it, uh, So typing is my deal. So I've got to be able to get to where... I can do that. And see, our, our keyboard at the house ain't big enough for my big old fat hand. So <laughs> it, it covers across. So I've got to, but I will learn to type by then. And if, yeah. if I could ever learn to type, hell, I'd write for a lot of magazines and all yeah. that. And yeah, because I get asked all, a, a lot of times, write and draw for a bunch of stuff, but I just, I just need to do it. Yeah. But that's my deal. And as far as publishing, my, my wife's uncle, it has uh uh he's he's written several couple of books and he's he said I could use his publisher and they'll he told me how they'll walk you through it and all yeah. this, put you on Amazon and all that. But yeah. So I got a little foot in the door when it comes to that part of it. And I, so I, I know it'll probably Of course uh Jim, my wife's uncle, he said it, that that publisher that he's got he said man he said they they work fast he said, where well, usually it'll take you a year by the time you give it to them and they can put it all together and all that he said it's usually like a year he said but he had him up and going in three months so but as far as writing a book you know it'll take a tell them, but if i can ever get right. that typing down yeah. it won't take me no time yeah and, uh, yeah because when i wrote for that magazine you know going back to that deadline part you know, she would text me two weeks in advance. Hey, deadline's next Friday, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, okay, I got you, I got you. <laughs> well, uh, every time she would text me on Friday morning at 4 a.m., you do know your deadline's day. Oh, crap. So I'd run there because she knew I was up all night. So I'd go in there in my underwear, and I'd have to write an article <laughs> at 4 a.m. in my underwear. That was my genre. That's what yeah. I did. And uh, so... But one time I got caught kind of because me and Kelly Jackson were hunting that Nevada, Nevada state championship hunt. Well, we, uh, I, same deal. We had to leave to go down. And I, oh crap. I forgot to write my article. So I get up early <laughs> that morning. I write the article, me and him drive to him, carry, get out there, check the country. Well, the next morning she sends me a text. Uh, Clay, I, I said, Hey, I wrote my article. I wrote my, I done submitted it. She goes, no, that's not what I'm calling. She laughed. She goes, uh, uh, you wrote that same article last February. And I went, <laughs> God almighty. I said, well, it ain't plagiarism if it's your own stuff. So I said, and I, I said, was it accurate? And she goes, Oh yeah, it was almost a spot on the exact same deal. <laughs> and I said, Well, that's why you know it's true. I got <laughs> so then so here I am in Tucan Carry. I ain't got no computer. We're staying in a twenty five dollar motel and uh and so I gotta I gotta go to the hundred and twenty five dollar motels over there and <laughs> try to sneak in there. Well that's not nearly as easy as you would think it is. They got they kicked me out of one. Uh are you are you uh, are you do you have a room here, sir? Uh, no, I just need to use No, you can't do that. Finally, I found a guy at the Hilton uh, named Howard. Matter of fact, I incorporated him into the story. And <laughs> I wrote my story. He let me in. He goes, I don't give a shit. Get after it, buddy. And I said, well, Howard, come here. And I took a picture of him. He said, You're fixing to make the pay. Make the deal. So, uh, but yeah, so I got tired of that. So I was sure, sure happy to, but I like writing. And I like, and you know, that's, yeah, they kicked me out of school. Well, matter of fact, they, uh, uh, I guess my sophomore year, the start of my sophomore year, because I got back in school when I moved in with that family and uh, da, da, da. And so I think it was 
Yeah, it was about the first two weeks of my sophomore year. Uh, I hadn't eaten in a while. I wasn't living. I was living in the grain elevator at that time because I hadn't eaten in a while. They moved up varsity and blah, blah, blah. I ain't had nothing to eat, so I, I sold a, a thirty eight pistol and two pair of nunchucks to our quarterback. <laughs> Well, that's 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 well and good, but I sold them to him in art class, and it turns out they frown on that shit. And uh, <laughs> well, I did that, and I go to my next class. It's uh, uh, science, and I've got that pistol stuck in my waistband, right? And I'm, we're taking a big test, and I get up there, and I'll be goddamn for my old buddy Sergio Arredondo. He sent the that, and our science teacher was a. Uh, uh, he was a little dainty, you know. He he, he was a, a science teacher. He had a little horn rim glass. He said, "Well, he wrote. He went up there when he turned his test, and he put in a, a note said Clay's got a gun and it's going to kill you.' And uh, and I was like, God dang it, Sergio! And then it, then I didn't help my cause out none. When I got out of my desk to go up there to turn my test in, that gun fell out of my waistband and went spinning across the table. And that old high, science teacher, he's looking at me like, he never said a word, though. And I said, sorry. And I picked my gun up, <laughs> put it in my waistband, turned my deal. And to his defense, he never told on me, never done nothing. But somebody else did. By this time, they all a couple periods later, which I'd done take them to, to the car, my cousin's car. And, uh, and then they said, uh, Clay Reed, you're needed in the office, please. Clay Reed, come to the office. And the football team, we had shaved our heads, so we all got bald heads. So I looked like a convict. Yeah, I looked like <laughs> somebody from the Aryan Brotherhood just walked into Owl Park High School. And uh, so I walked in there, and, of course, I ain't got a clue. And the old principal said, uh, Clay, do you got a gun? <gasps> what? No. <laughs> Who's got a gun? Nah, yeah. So, uh Anyway, I, he said, well, listen, just give me the gun. We'll give you three days suspension. Da, da, da. Yeah, I can do that. Well, that was a lie. He <laughs> lied to me because when the real principal found out, he was like Mr. Wynn. He's a little nervous guy. <laughs> call the laws. Call the laws. And, you know, and this is back in the day where everybody had shotguns yeah. and rifles in their pickups. But, you know, this day, they would hang me today. But, yeah. uh, but now... But they did throw me in jail and then told me not to come back to Iowa Park High School. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. So it was, yeah. The, what was funny is uh, I get down there to the jail and they say, uh, they take me to Wichita County Jail. Uh, uh, we need to talk to your father. And I said, good luck. I ain't seen him in three years. Okay. Well, we need to talk to your mom. I said, I ain't seen her in four. And I said, they kept me three days. They finally kicked me out. <laughs> I didn't know you get kicked out of yeah. jail. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it was a good deal. But I didn't get to go back to Iowa Park High School. Yeah, <laughs> and then here, I guess five years, five, five or six years ago, we had our class reunion, and hell, I was the guy that they put in charge of putting the class reunion together. I said, boys, I said, guys, I wasn't there. I was only there one one year, two weeks, and seven hours. I think. <laughs> So well, uh, yeah, but uh, we had a matter of fact. They're having our family or class reunion today in Remington Park, but I didn't go. But I'm uh, but anyway, it's, yeah. So the book will be. Like I say I don't know how long it'll take, but I got I got to learn to type. That's for There'll be a sure. lot of people buying it, I'm sure. There's yeah, a lot of people following you, following your adventure. I guess you'd say on Facebook. Dude, I'm telling you, these podcast deals. Yeah. Have, uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, it is it, it weird. I, I wouldn't say famous, but you get known because, like, when we hunted that, uh, that Eastern, you know, that mm -hmm. was in 2018, we get up there. I ain't never been to Virginia. I yeah. get up there to Virginia, and there's five or six guys sitting there. And, uh, this one kid come up and he's got a hat in his hand. He's going, uh, 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 and we're unloading them couch and I could tell they're watching me and I said, can I help you? And he goes, yeah. Can you sign my hat? <laughs> and I said, do what? 
and for, kind of freaked me out. And he goes, aren't you the coyote man? And I said, now, how does a kid in Bland, <laughs> Virginia, know who, who the hell the goddamn coyote man is? Yeah. He goes, well, I'll see you on that show. Da, da, da. And I said, oh. And, he goes, and his dad goes, oh, you don't have to. And I said, no, I don't mind doing it. But yeah. I've never, it just kind of yeah. weirded me out. I'm a thousand miles in the middle of nowhere, and, and somebody actually know my name. And then same happened last year when we, uh, uh, we get up there to, uh, oh, God dang it. Uh, we're hunting that contest in Elko, Nevada. Mm -hmm. And we get up there, and me and old Hunter rigged it up there. And, hey, there's guys, guys, uh, 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 coyote hunters down there. We were on the second floor, and we just got done scouting that day. Come down there, three guys are drinking a beer down there. And, and oh, uh, oh, this Mexican guy that we got to meet right there, he goes, hey, buddy, there's them guys down there coyote hunting too. I said, no shit. I said, y'all doing good? No, nah, hell, it sucked. We didn't see nothing. I said, yeah, we didn't see nothing either. And I said, where y'all from? And they said, oh, we're from Park City, Utah. I said, where are you from? I said, hell, we're way back there in Texas. He goes, Texas? He goes, you don't know a guy named Clay Reed down there? <laughs> and when I said that, oh, uh, Hunter's eyes rolled back in his head. So I'm going to the room. <laughs> He's in there in the left. I said, how the hell do you know who the guy named Clay Reed is? He goes, oh, my son-in-law lives in Frisco, Texas, and then he coyote hunts. He's always, he's always talking about the coyote man, Clay Reed. I said, I'll be damned all the way in Eureka, Nevada, which is dead set in the middle. So, but, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool, you know, that a lot of a lot of these podcasts. Well, it's like that first podcast I did with, uh, uh, I guess it was 23rd or 23rd, and, Hell, I think it's got like eight million views on something like yeah. that. And now I've done like eight of them, and, and hell, but the bad thing about it when you, you, it's not good to do a bunch of podcasts on the same show because you turn into that old man that tells the same stories over and over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's why I like going on these. You know, yeah. when summertime, I fix. Once I get done branding, I'm I'm headed out go count up. Cause I can go sit. I love to go sit in them old timey bars, and yeah. you know, up in them places, those cool places. Those people ain't never heard my material. They ain't never <laughs> heard those. They, I'm I'm not the same old man. I'm a new old man telling stories that are interesting. Uh, Everybody in my town, like, oh God, I've heard that song gun sixty times. <laughs> Tell it somebody else, dude. Yeah. So uh, I got to get out and make new stories. Yeah. And, uh, and that like. When I hunted in Caliente, Nevada that one time, uh, I get up there and I crawl in this bar. Uh, I say get bar, but anyway, I go in there and tell that waitress, give me two bar or two beers. She hands me two beers. Boy, I'm sucking them down because I come through a canyon over there that is straight up on both sides, 27 miles with rock. They got rocks the size of trucks in the road, in the middle of the road. And they've, they've closed the road years ago but for this rock because there's rocks falling at all times. And I thought it'd be a cool idea to take the back way. Well, I didn't realize the back way was that nerve wracking. I white knuckled <laughs> it, and the speed limit's like 35 mile an hour coming through. When I got through it, I guarantee you couldn't drive a toothpick up my ass with a sledgehammer. <laughs> and so when I walked in, I said, give me two beers. So I'm drinking that beer, and I start talking to this old gal, and I look down there on, at the end of the bar, and there's this old man. And uh, he listened to me for a while, and he goes, hey, boy, whereabouts from Texas you from? I said, how the hell did you know I was from Texas? And he drank his beer, and he goes, it's obvious. And he said, oh, yeah. I said, where are you from? He goes, Tyler. I said, Tyler, Texas? He goes, yeah. And I said, what the hell brought you to Caliente, Nevada? He goes, warrants. I'm a wanted man in Cal Tyler, Texas. I said, oh. I said, how long you been up here? He goes, 37 years. I said, oh, I got you. Well, this is a good place to hide. There's only one way in and one way out of this song, guys. And rocks are falling. That's when I, the, the, I didn't know I suffered from a condition, condition called boulder anxiety. The fear of a boulder falling on your ass. I come through there and I said, I may get hit by a rock. But it's going to be a moving target because I was flying. <laughs> and then I come around a curve over there and dang near hit a, uh, a bunch of wild horses. And, uh, yeah, it was. But I love going to those little spots. Yeah. And, you know, I went to a deal called Coyote Days at Lusk, Wyoming. And it's another uh, cool place. It's a little 1,500-acre 
or fifteen hundred people town, mm-hmm. but it's got eight magnificent bars. And I was like, why in the <laughs> hell they got these big, giant, beautiful bars? But I asked the wait or waitress in there once, why do y'all get these deals? She says, well, in wintertime here, you can't do nothing else. Everybody, it keeps us, it's a social life. And I said, oh, and he said, you know, in the summertime, they get a lot of tourists, but in the wintertime, that's where you got to be. And I'm going to tell you, if you want to feel good about yourself, (laughs) you go to Lusk, Wyoming, (laughs) because I guarantee you, I come here, you know, I got me a new shirt on up there, you know, because they got this deal and I'm I'm, I'm shining. I got my new uh, button down shirt on my cowboy hat and i come walking in my start chain and i walk in the back way of this bar and there was six gals in this son of a gun and i could put all six of them together and not get a full set of teeth and but they loved they looked at me like i was new meat and they had that old toothpick of them how you doing yeah i said hey uh you got anything to eat? Oh, yeah come on in here come on in here <laughs> they, were, they loved the cow man so I get down there and I sit down and they're they're fixing to start fighting over which one's going to court me tonight, and I, I I was getting a little nervous, and then uh, all of a sudden this other old boy comes in there and he sits down at the bar, and he starts talking to this one old gal, and uh, and I could tell right I felt like that old man in Caliente, I said hey boy, I said where about some Texas you from? He goes how'd you know I was from Texas? He goes. Well, for one, you got too many teeth to be from here. And I said, two, you got that accent. He goes, I'm from Houston. And, uh, so, uh, we got, and he's, I said, how long you been here? And he goes, too long since last November. And he said, uh, I said, I'm leaving Tuesday. And I said, I don't blame you. It is a great place, but it's the coldest place in North America. And he's a welder. And yeah. he said, God almighty. He said, we, he said, all them welders, they all brought all their, their trailers up there? No, negative ghost rider. They couldn't. Have, it wasn't a heater <laughs> one that could heat them. So, gonna, so they all started renting houses over there. And uh, but yeah, it's but it was Wyoming. I, it was a cool deal. That old Les Johnson was up yeah. there, and it was more of a um, trapping oriented deal. But right, and I tell you what, I met a guy, and I happened to be staying in this little hotel, and. Uh, but uh, this one, I can't remember his name. It's like Rocco or something like that. But when you think of Mountain Man, this guy was Mountain Man. <laughs> and he just happened to be staying next to me. And he didn't talk a lot. He gave a, a seminar up there, but you could tell he's not very talkative guy, kind of coyote guy, and stayed to himself. But me and him got drinking beer out there, and he was talking, and he, he told me he killed – uh, he traps. That's what he does for a living. They don't do anything else. He, yeah. he averaged ninety dollars a coyote on his coyotes up there. I think it was one hundred and twenty-five coyotes he trapped, and he gets uh, so much for the uh, bobcats too. But he sold a cat up there that was twelve hundred eighty dollars. That's pretty good. That's God dang, I was unreal. And then he gets he gets that for sell the pelt, but he also gets like one hundred twenty-five dollars uh, head. Uh, from the uh, goat sheep sheep right, association yeah. up there, so he he made a hell of a living. Yeah. I said, "Where do you live at?" And he goes, right "Here in this pickup." He says, "I don't I don't own a house, don't own a." I mean, but he was raw bone. You know, he probably weighed one hundred and sixty pounds. No sun baked. Yeah, yeah, you could tell. I mean, and he wasn't. Oh, he's probably fifty years old, I'd guess. But you could tell he wasn't one of them guys I wanted. to. Right. Hey, dumbass. Yeah. yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, he got you in a hurry. Where uh, did uh, where did the name Coyote Man come from? That's from a uh, dang uh, Craig Bosworth. He hunted with a guy named uh, Joe Gotzi and um, old man, uh, oh my, John Hendrick. Well, they and uh, Craig is from California, but he 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 lived in Knox City and. Uh, Good, some gun loves coyote hunting. Young, young guy. Well, anyway, he uh, he he would hunt the uh, Graham hunt back in the day. Mm-hmm. Well, he'd hunt with John, and John is one of the coyote colonists. He's one of them old men been doing his whole life. But you know, today, you know, he was hand calling it. Yeah. Well, John's getting old, and I told him, I said, boys, 
I said, y'all have got to get you one of these daggum callers. Mm -hmm. And that's back when I used a WT. And then I said, you got to get and they finally did get one of them boogers, and uh, yeah, and they drawed their first check. But anyway, Craig started calling me. The cat, well, there's the old cow man. There's the old cow man, because he'd always call me, you know, questions about this or that, and and well, then next every time he call it, well, then this guy picked up on yeah. it, and then this guy picked on. It. Well, then a lot of people called me. Yeah. First started out kind of a novelty, and I guess to a sense it is, but hell, they're and let, when I it's, go out somewhere, there's no cow. It's man. stuck. I, it's stuck. Yeah, it kind of stuck. But uh, and if I can get this deal done, if I can go to 365 straight days of cow hunting, I will have earned that title as the cow. Oh, man. for I sure. Will, yeah. So. Well, I mean, you're. It's pretty much done. Yeah. You just gotta stick with it. <laughs> well, yeah. If anybody well, can, I figure. Well, that's like that in 2018 when uh, I. Uh, you know, I decided to hunt all them contests. Oh, mm -hmm. You know, around here is one thing, but I wanted mm -hmm. to hunt the Eastern, the New Mexico State, Arizona State, my hunt, and then the Worlds. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, right out of the box, we we want me and Kelly Jackson killed them 29 coyotes basically in a day. Well, we killed 25 first day, made two stands. Next day, killed four more. 29, that was, I mean, that was a yeah. bunch of, in daylight. And it was crazy. And what was funny is I called them that night, Jim Bob Allen, because you had to call in after the first night and tell them how you had. And, uh, yeah, Jim Bob is Clay. All right, how many you got? Uh, 25. That's all you heard was silence. <laughs> and he goes, how in the hell you killed 25? I said, Jim Bob, I ain't going to bullshit you. We only had two at 1030. And uh, he said, God dang it. And we moved. They wasn't moving north of the ranch, so I moved south. We got in them, and we killed a, a double, a triple, a single, a triple, a double. And I said, we just kept piling. And on the last call, we could have killed a, a, a quad, but the cow was sitting out there. But we had to put the, you had to put your, you had to make a, a video and do yeah. all that, but we didn't have time to get it done. Yeah. I said, or we'd have killed tw uh, 26. And, uh, but anyway, and then so, uh, so we won that hunt <laughs> and you know, what? Like, we get over there, of course they were, oh, yeah. they were, you, know, you cheating <laughs> sons of bitches. Oh, no, you're so good. And, and matter of fact, you know, usually you got one guy has to take the, the polygraph. Oh no, we both had to take the polygraph. <laughs> and, uh, of course we didn't mind it. And, uh, so then the next hunt was the Arizona state championship. Mm -hmm. all right and, and what we're doing is we're hunting basically one day because like new mexico was out there in albuquerque so we 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 hunted in texas at my place and then had to the next day we didn't get to hunt everybody else is hunting two days we're hunting yeah. one day well then arizona it gets more difficult because we we signed we luckily you mail in there we mail in but we had to drive 12 after we got done day one we killed 18 cows me and lynn trader killed 18 and then drive 12 hours go through a blizzard at gallup they had a 10 car pile up on there and go through there and we pulled into arizona that morning and of course i got to do all the driving because i get car sick if i'm not the driver yeah so lynn he gets to sleep so I, I get over there. I got a booger on my damn gun. I've been fighting that song gun. And uh, anyway, so we get over there and uh, so Lynn gets sleep. We pull into Arizona. I am tired. And he goes, he says, uh, well, we're going to make a call. I said, no, if they beat us, they beat us. My ass is going to sleep. And But before that hunt started, Brian Brooks put it on and probably one of the best ran hunts I've ever yeah. seen. But before that hunt, he had like 20 teams drop out because they heard we were going to hunt it. <laughs> but this this says something a lot about Brian Books because I told Brian, I said, Brian, I said, we'll drop out of your hunt. I don't want to, I don't want to screw your hunt. He goes, yeah. no, I am not going to change or dictate the rules of my hunt and the people that hunt my deal because some are cowards. I know y'all didn't hunt or uh, didn't cheat. And I said, if they can't do that, and I said, well, I, I'm just telling you, man. And we wind up winning, and they were, they were some good teams in it. But the best, <laughs> what was funny is about that hunt, is he had all these guns. I mean, it was in the coolest place. 
But he had prizes like I mean tables, several like seven tables full of prizes. But over here on this table, he had a bunch of guns, right? Mm-hmm. They were giveaways, all right, prizes. And what he would do is he would call your number, and you got to come up there and pick whatever table, even the guns. Yeah. Well, he I bet he picked got dog twenty names. Before the people realized that the guns were in the prize, and I, and I was one of them. I'm sitting there. I said, "Well, I want to win that call, you know." And he goes, "And they, and oh, hell, it may have been Tony Tebby. I think it was Tony." He goes, "Well, I want to win one of the rifles." I said, "Them rifles are up." He goes, "Yeah." He said, "Yeah." And these people don't realize that them rifles are. I said, "Well, boy, come on." And we're sitting there, and all of a sudden, it caught on. Oh, Oh, and there goes the one right one. Yeah. And then these people that's over here that went and got a caller is going, <laughs> Hey, those are, yeah, I told y'all from any table. I bet he had ten or twelve guns he'd give away just on the table. And we won two AR fifteens and but uh yeah, I thought that was a good gun, but I mean good hunt. I mean they run it by all right, well so we went them two. That's when oh wow, Al Morris popped off. Mm-hmm. He said, y'all going to have to quit hunting them junior high hunts to come up here and hunt with the big boy. <laughs> oh, good Lord. That pissed me off. And I said, well, if I come up there, you, because hey, hey, uh, he's won it the world three times. Yeah. I said, well, I can tell you this. If I come up, if I do, you won't win your fourth one. So I had motive. I said, we cannot. But this is how brutal that was. We, you got to, you can't just mail in sign up there. You got to drive, uh, you got to be there at sign in. So we rent, uh, we get us a plane ticket, fly mm-hmm. from DFW to Salt Lake City, Utah, rent a car, drive down there, sign up, drive back down there, and then fly back here. And then we get two hours sleep and then hunt all day. We killed 16 coyotes. And then I got to jump in that truck and drive 17 hours back up there to the way in. So I drive all the way back up there and it really wasn't that bad until I come through Cortez, Colorado, the elk and, and Chama, mm-hmm. the elk, and it, I couldn't drive but about 50, 55 mile an hour. I mean, they were dead. They, they were truckers splattering yeah. them boogers left and right. But we get her done, and uh, and that was the most crookedest hunt. But the good thing was we beat out. <laughs> and, uh, and, and what was bad is I give some advice to Nathan and them, and they beat me with it. <laughs> yeah, they. If I would have shut my mouth, I'd have been the world champion. But anyway, so uh, they, uh, uh, so we beat Big Al, and uh, but we get up there. You know, we're second place at the world championship, 130 daggum team. Mm-hmm. I thought we're gonna make some money up this summer. Gonna be worth the deal because hell, we got like a thousand dollars in plane tickets. Yeah, and uh, well, I'll be god dang. We get up there and we win, like. I think it was fourteen hundred dollars, uh, fourteen hundred dollars, a ball cap, shooting sticks, and a screwdriver and a fire starter. <laughs> and I was like, I thought it was a joke. I thought they were messing with me. Yeah. I mean, because this deal cost you like four hundred dollars to enter and got a hundred thirty something team. And I was like, no way. And then Nathan and them win two thousand yeah. dollars, and a couple of sh- uh, rifles. But still, yeah. my Allsup's hunts back home pay two thousand yeah. dollars. An Allsup's hunt, yeah. and uh, oh, I was madder than a jap. And boy, they're up there taking the pictures with me. And uh, that some gun boy, I'm mad. And they said, and everybody's laughing. I said, no, boys, I can laugh. I said because this is my one time. I said, but you guys are coming up here every year to this crooked dang deal. Yeah. And boy, when I got home, I wrote a long post on it. And, of course, I told him, I said, boys, I know y'all are going to piss me off. And, and Al, you know, he helped with the deal. What Al's doing, it was right. Jim Schwartz. And Al and Amy did a great job running it, and they did all this. But but they had everything paid for. The the the, the uh, place, the uh, facilities was paid for. They had a ribeye dinner that Tom Austin them, they paid for. So none of this money. We had it figured out there was like $14,000 uh, mm-hmm. that was missing out. Yeah. They had 18 guns up there. Two went to Nathan and Laramie. The rest of them, they auctioned off to the hunters. They were all supposed to be given away. This one handmade company made them especially for the champions. They didn't get them. Those guns were never seen. Yeah. Yeah. So when I got back, I said, boys, y'all are going to be mad. 
but sometimes you got to turn the boat upside down and yep. figure out there's a yep. hole in it. And the next year they had like 12 and now, you know, now them uh, all the shitty brothers, they bought the rights out for it. Yeah. But then they, they put them, uh, goofy old, uh, the, uh, the way they do it is, is, you know, there's five on one day and five the next day. And the first guy to get back with their five. But if you, uh, I think if you don't kill five on the first day, you're not, you don't even get to hunt on the second day. It's, it's the craziest dang thing. And, and, uh, and it's turned into a lucky duck. All lucky duck guys get there, but, um, which that don't bother me. Uh, but, but just make it, that's hard. Yeah. It's the world championship yeah. hunt. Go back to it's most coyotes. Right. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. Because it's lost its luster. Yeah. You know, everybody wants to run around with, with a uh, world championship buckle. Well, somebody might need to change the name slightly and well, start a new one. And there's actually a <laughs> hunt out of Missouri is the exact name. And I told him, I said, but, but the bad thing is it's basically a localized hunt. Yeah. Because there ain't no mail ins and you got, you got to have a, what I wanted to do back in the day when they, after all that BS went down, I thought way I want to do it and I'm man wouldn't be opposed to doing it again. It's like, all right, say this year I host, you know, because mm-hmm. I've got an established hunt. I host the world championship. Yeah. So, and same old rules as was. All right. Well then next year, Jason Gross close at the Eastern. Right. He yeah. hosts it. The next year, uh, Jeff Nimnick up there in Kansas hosting. Mm-hmm. Those established hunts can do it. And then I would say, all right, say I donate $1,000 a year of mine to each one of them. So that would give, if you had like say five places, that's $4,000 coming to the added hunt. Right. My hunt this year, this and that year. And it rotates to all, because that was what was bad about the, about the, uh, world championship being out there. It's, it's a West, uh, it's not world championship. It's West championship. Hunt. Yeah. And yeah. cause you know, guys ain't got time to go out. I mean, your average, go, some great coyote hunters that are in Florida or Virginia ain't got time to go out there and scout. Yeah. And if you can't scout for, well, I've proven that. I've been trying to win a uh, Nevada deal. <laughs> and it's like pulling teeth. They've whooped my ass three hunts in a row. <laughs> and because I ain't got time to go out, I'm just going yeah. out there blind. But that well, that gives guys. I mean, I mean, it's a mythical title anyway. But right. it gives guys in, in different areas of the yeah. nation, yeah. and then if the big boys want, to, plus you got to be able to pay it. But I always thought that would be a good way of doing it, and oh, yeah. kind of have the title. And then I thought, well, I'll just make it the national title. Well, they got the nationals up there in Wyoming, which it's basically Wyoming. It's not national, right? But, yeah, so it's. Anyway, but then on the other whole deal, I'm getting old enough now. All I want to do is go hunt. That's why this year I oh, yeah. said I wasn't going to do it, but I caught enough flack. I'll do it. It ain't that big a deal. <laughs> yeah. But I think we'll have a good time and I can get some good sponsors and get to see everybody and make it a big. But that's the only bad thing about making it a 24 hour hunt is by the time you get there, everybody. You're not wanting to sit around yeah. and smoke cigarettes. Yeah. You? You're wanting to go home. Yep. That's what's a good thing about it being daylight. But it'll be what it is. And right. we'll, we'll have a good time. And I guarantee you there'll be some. There's going to be some waspy. Bruce Williams, Keith Bowles, Nathan Laramie, Wesley No, them mm-hmm. guys, Kowski. There's going to be some Lane, JC. Yeah. going to be some big old numbers brought up. I guarantee it. Yeah. And the thermal and. Like I say, it'll nowadays, you know, finding a hunt with allows thermals is kind of tough. Yeah. You know, a lot of them won't do it. And uh, it's, it's still pretty <coughs> controversial. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a lot of people think it gives you an unfair advantage and whatever. That's, I don't. So does electric call. So yeah. does a supercharged rifle. I yeah. mean, I mean, that's what I say. It's, you it's still got to, well, depending on the rules. Most of them, you have to get some sort of acknowledgement out of the animal. You're still going to call them, still going to yep. shoot them. That's right. You know. But the bottom line is just killing cows. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it, but, uh, and you could, you know, you could invent 
all kinds of excuses and reasons why or not to. But that's usually all it is. Yeah, that's exactly what <laughs> I got it. And I, or you got it and I ain't got it. So I don't want that to happen. Yeah. And I, I, I get, I get that, but like I say, the thermal has advantage advantages and that's just like, all right. Say everybody hunts a thousand acres. Well, if I got 500,000 acres and you got a thousand acres, I got an advantage. Yeah. That's the same, same yeah. deal. Yep. You can't fault me because I got 500,000 acres, yeah. you know, you still, I don't, but these people that are putting up consistently winning contests or scoring or placing in the upper three or whatever, it's not, it's not equipment alone. It's land. It's they're almost always, well, no, there's not almost always what it, as it pertains to like number and coyotes, it's generally they're hustlers. Yeah. They got the land and they got the, they know their system. They are hustlers. I've never been with anybody. These, uh, weekend hunters, what I call them that meander around, they get out of each stand. They argue about who's going to shoot yep. and all this stuff that you're not winning no contest unless it's, uh, a heavy side pot. The people who are going out doing what you do or some of these other guys, Nathan, uh, all them kind of teams. Yeah. Yeah. Them guys are hustlers. They go get it. And you know, something that's, uh, a lot of people don't realize is continuity of partners. Yes. I mean, knowing, knowing what you're going to do before we do it. And that, I mean, that's, that's what me and Mitch, you know, for 25 years, he knows what I'm on. He knows where we're going to set yeah. up. He knows how we're going to set up. You no. Know, and, and that is, I mean, crucial. Yeah. You know, because in the last few years, my buddy Mitch, he's been sick. and then, uh, I've had to hunt with several different partners and some of them have been great. And some of them we've had hell just <laughs> because they do such stuff yes. different. And yeah. that, uh, I ain't saying they're doing anything wrong. It's just yeah. different the way I do it. Yeah. And, uh, you get out of your comfort zone yeah. and yeah. Yeah, that's one thing uh, JC spoke about, which that's one thing I know it's a long time ago because I used to hunt with so many different teams and stuff like that, is teams working together to where a lot of them you don't even have to talk. They just know what they're going to do. That's they go do it. Yeah. There's no wasted time. They just go get it done. Yeah, I, I walk into a spot. I ain't got to say, Mitch, you go here, you yeah. go there. He knows where I'm going. I knows where. He, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, oh, it's just. And, you know, the same with working cattle. I mean, I, I you know, I, we go out there. I, I got a buddy of mine named Doug Dunkel. Me and him, we can do more sh- shit together, just me and him, than I get 15 guys because he knows what I'm going to do. We read each other's yeah. mind, and, you know, work together long enough. But, yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's, like I say, it's after hunting, uh, with several people, it's kind of like that. You hear that song when you, you don't know what you got till it's gone. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's why I cussed Mitch. You got a dang son of a gun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he's getting better. So, well, I think that's probably a good spot to wrap it up for now. Yeah. We, are, we definitely we, want we, you to. Dang right. Come back. Yeah, I got to go find this booger that's bugging me on my nose right now. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely can, want you can, back after the end of the year. Absolutely. Kind of do a little, little recap of Yeah, recap. Yeah, that'd be all that. Dang right. Well, well we, that's what I say. I'm going to, you saved my life with them bullets last time. <laughs> yeah, because God almighty. Them, it's kind of rough right I, now. With yeah. Ammo. Ah, yeah, find it, find it. Bullets for them suckers is, and you know, huge difference between twenty two Creedmoor and that twenty two two fifty. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just I can reach out there at four hundred yards at night with that mm-hmm. thermal and pop them up, oh, and you ain't got to. I mean, it's it's just crazy. And I was a two fifty guy for yeah. for a hundred years, but oh, I, and I cussed Kelly Jackson <laughs> when he taught me into putting that Creedmoor. Yeah. Remember, I tell you. Yeah. That. Yeah, because that's before I had a suppressor, and that son of a gun kicked like a goddamn mule. <laughs> uh, dang, I don't know. But once I got a suppressor, oh, my gosh. Yeah. But, but, yeah, we'll have to come back. Oh, for sure. Well, I guess that's pretty much it for this one. All See right. See you guys next time. Thanks for coming, Clay. You bet.